Hey, what's up guys and welcome to 61 Oracle, the Cleric Support Soul. Oracles provide a lot of the same buffs and debuffs that a bard can, so they are relatively interchangeable in a raid setting. In this guide, I'll be showing you how to spend your points, which masteries to use, and how to play Oracle. So let's go ahead and get started. So looking at the Soul Tree breakdown, you'll see we put the full 61 points in Oracle. That is because the 61 point ability, Defend the Fallen, is a 15% damage increase over 15 seconds. And it's going to be one of the main reasons that you're playing Oracle in the first place. So moving over to the secondary soul, we take 7 in Shaman, that's 5 in Dauntless Courage for a 10% spell power increase, and 2 in Singled Out for a 4% single target damage increase. For the third soul, we're going 8 in Defiler, 5 in Open Minded for a 10% Wisdom increase, and 3 in Obsessive for a 3% damage, healing, and absorption increase. As a bonus for going into Defiler, 8 points, we have Rage Blight and Blade of Greed, which will give you another 5% damage increase, as well as picking up Lothram Restoration, which is a nice spammable heal in a pinch. Moving over to the Masteries, level 61, we take Avenging Shield. This gives you a 3% max health shield every 6 seconds. Level 62, we get Blessing of Penitence, uh, Penitence which increases incoming healing by 3% and increases the chance of your Insignia Protection to proc by 10%. For those of you who aren't familiar, your Insignia Protection has a native 25% chance to shield the attacker, absorbing up to 5,500 damage over the next 10 seconds. Uh, with this Mastery, it now has a 35% chance. Moving up to level 63, or yeah, level 63 Mastery here. We have Supplicant's Haste, which will make instant enchanted abilities apply a stack of Supplicant's Haste, increasing your movement speed by 12% with 3 stacks. Level 64, we take Diversify, is a 5% damage increase there. At level 65, we take Vicar's Bulwark, simply because the other two abilities will consume uh, emblems, and we don't want to do that. So we take Vicar's Bulwark, because Vicar's Bulwark does not consume emblems. We'll talk more about that in the rotation section, however. So that's it for the Souls and Masteries, guys. Let's go ahead and talk about the macros. I only use five macros here. The first one is going to be your spam macro, which is going to have Glacial Insignia and Insignia Blood in it. Glacial Insignia is a damage cooldown. Insignia Blood is a your spamming, your damage, your single target damage spammer. Moving on down, we got the Defend the Fallen Resuscitating Chant macro. Defend the Fallen, of course, is your 15% damage increase over 15 seconds. And Resuscitating Chant is going to be your energy regeneration ability. Moving on down, we have the plus 1900 here. This is going to be your Premonition and Corroded Defense. Premonition is going to apply all emblems and allow you I'll give you two stacks of Premonition, which is, allows you to use abilities without consuming emblems, which is why we use Corroded Defense with it, because Corroded Defense uh, will last longer based on how many emblem you, emblems you consume when you cast it. And Corroded Defense will allow uh, everybody in your raid to have a chance to do 1,900 uh, extra damage uh, every three seconds on the target. Moving on down, we got the Vicar's Bulwark macro. This is a 30% reduction in damage over five seconds. Uh, this is literally just so I can put the at mouse over UI so I can hover the cursor over that person's name and use the 8 key, which is where this macro is. For the fifth macro, it's just a mana macro. This is just so I can label, the, label it uh, so that I know what it is. <clears throat> so that's it for the macros, guys. Let's go ahead and move on to the action bar and the buffs. So the top left corner here, you can see we have Mass Bestowal. This is pretty cool because when you hit it, it casts all known boons and inspiration. So you got five abilities right there to just cast for you. Uh, so it casts Boon of Resurgence, which is the standard strength, dex, intelligence, and wisdom increase of 85. Boon of Vitality, which is the endurance increase of 85. Then we have Inspiration of Battle, which increases attack power, spell power by 275, and critical hit chance by 1%. We have Inspiration of Survival, which uh, gives the raid a nice little 10% of incoming damage reduction for 20 seconds. However, it only does um, reduce it by 5,000 damage. Uh, but it, as a bonus, this one will also increase incoming healing by 5%. And Inspiration of the Keep will reduce damage taken by 5% in all party raid members for 20 seconds whenever an Insignia is cast. These three abilities here will, will trigger any time you cast an Insignia. As a bonus, when you cast an Insignia, you also get a 5% bonus to your raid's attributes, such as Wisdom, Strength, all that. So, pretty good stuff there. So, very similar to, to the Bard. Moving on over to the right, we have our Favors. Uh, this is really similar to Bard as well. The Bard has Anthems. The Oracle has Favors. So Favor of the Current is a movement speed increase of 15%. Martial Favor is a 5% ability cost reduction. And Defensive Favor is an armor increase of 4,000. Typically, you're going to be asked to run the Run Speed buff because most raids run Chloros nowadays, a Chloromancer. Uh, however, if there is no Chloromancer, you'll probably be asked to use Martial Favor, which is the ability cost reduction of 5%. Moving on to the right, we got the Rage Blight from Defiler. And Blighted Greed, which is also from, from, from Defiler, Rage Blight will go on you. Blighted Greed will go on typically your tank. Over to the right one more, we got the Oracle Kalerts. You'll see a couple abilities over here to the right, these four. These are just here that, so that I can demonstrate what they are and what they do. Moving down to the secondary bar here, we have Emblem of Alacrity. This will reduce the cast time of the next damaging or healing non-emblem, non-instant ability by two seconds. And it's mana cost by 33%. 33%. 
You typically won't have to cast this because it'll get cast automatically with your premonition. And this one, this one is one of the three emblems you'll be casting, and it is not consumed when you use Insignius. But we'll talk more about that in the rotation section. Moving on to the right, on the QQ, we have Wasting Insignia. This is a standard damage over time ability. On the EQ, we have Insignia Protection. Gives a 25% chance to shield the attacker, absorbing up to 5,500 damage over the next 10 seconds. On the RQ, we have our Premonition Macro. Uh, one more over here, we have Curse of Frailty and Curse of Consumption. Curse of Frailty increases physical damage taken by the enemy by 5%. And this one increases non-physical damage taken by the enemy by 7%. One thing to note is these are on a 30 second cooldown, so typically you won't be casting them. They'll be cast by your Archon because their buffs last like 5 minutes. Um, however, one cool thing with the Oracle is that these are AoE. You can cast this on a mob and it has a 10 meter range uh, to spread to other mobs. So pretty cool in AoE environments. Moving all the way over to the right here, we have our Mana Vials. It's a very, very good idea to have Mana Potions on you as a Cleric. Of course, we have our Mana Regeneration button here. Down in the main bar we have Emblem of Pain, which is one of our main emblems that we cast. This one is going to give you a nice little damage increase. Emblem of Ice is going to increase the damage or healing of the next non-emblem ability by 26%. Moving over to the number 3 key, we have the Spam Macro here, which is Glacial Insignia and, and Insignia of Blood. Moving over to 4, we have the Defend the Fallen Resuscitating Enchant Macro. Number 5, we have Battle Fury. This resets and reduces the cooldown of the Cleric's in Insignia to 0. Preventing abilities from consuming emblems. So once you have all three of your emblems up here, you can just spam this key as long as your battle fury is on, and you won't consume those emblems. It's a nice little burst. Uh, very, it actually, kind of plays very similar to the way the bard plays. So moving over to the six and seven keys, we have glacial mark, which applies glacial mark to ten party raid member members, causing the next heal on affected allies while they're below 50% health to heal for an additional 6,000 health. So this is nice if your raid is taking a whole lot of damage and your healers are having issues keeping them up. Number seven is discerning wave. It deals about 23,000 damage to enemies hit and applies a shield absorbing 6,000 damage to all party raid members. Whenever I use this, I typically use it for the shield component, not for the DPS component, but it does a little bit of both. One thing to note is that both of these abilities will consume all of your emblems. That includes Emblem of Alacrity. So you want to be careful when you're using these because you'll have to reapply all three of your emblems before you can start into your DPS rotation again. Moving on to 8, we have the Vicar's Bulwark. It is a 30% damage reduction for 5 seconds, which is targetable, so you can put it on whoever. Number 9, Loathsome Restoration. This is a spammable heal that's about 7,000 health. Uh, 0, if you've watched my guides before, you know that 0 is mapped to my middle click and usually is reserved for interrupts and cleanses, things like that. This is your cleanse, and it, it is a double cleanse. It cleanses when you, when you press it, it cleanses, and then 3 seconds later, it'll to cleanse again. On the minus key, we have Icy Cascade. This is a spammable heal as well, however, it does have a 2 second cast time. It restores 10,000 health, but if you have three emblems up, it will consume them and deal 100% more health for each emblem. So if, right now it does 10k. If we were to consume three emblems, it would do about 40k. The equals key, of course, is Oversight, which allows emblems and insignias to affect three enemies instead of one, reducing their damage by 50%. Uh, what that basically means is if you, if you have three or more mobs, this, it's a DPS game to have this guy toggled on. So that's it for the action bar and the buff, guys. Let's go ahead and talk about the uh, Kalitz real quick. So looking at the K alerts here, we have a few that we track. Uh, starting at the top, we have Insignia of Protection. That's the 25% chance to shield the attacker, absorbing 5,500. We have the debuffs here. So we have the 5% physical, the 7% non-physical, and the 1,900 extra damage every 3 seconds. Down at the bottom, we have the Emblem of Alacrity, which is this guy. We have the Emblem of Pain, which is this guy. And we have the Emblem of Ice, which is this guy. Now we, uh, oh, if you go over one more to the right there, you have in, uh, Wasting Insignia, which is this guy. And then down at the bottom, we have our stacks of premonition right there. So we have two stacks of premonition that we can use when we cast it, uh, which if you cast premonition, it'll allow you to use abilities without consuming emblems uh, twice. So that's what that's, that's there for. So that's it for the k -Alerts, guys. Let's go ahead and talk about the rotation and how to play Oracle. The first thing you want to do as an Oracle is you want to coordinate with your Raid Leader or Archon and find out when Flaring Power is going to be cast. For the sake of this video, we're going to assume that it's going out four global cooldowns in, so that's how I'm going to demonstrate the rotation. So the first thing you want to do is get your target, this Raid Boss Practice Dummy will do nicely for us, and then you're going to use your R key twice, which will cast Premonition first, and then it will cast Corroded Defense. Uh, after that, you're going to move over to your E key and cast Insignia Protection. You cast both of these before the fight starts because it will not aggro the boss. Once the fight starts, you're going to move and you're going to start out by casting Wasting Insignia, and then you're going to, which, which by the way will consume one of the stacks of Premonition, and then you're going to cast your Glacial Insignia, which will consume another stack, the other stack of Premonition. And then you're going to hit your 3 key again to cast Insignia of Blood. 
Now you're on your fourth global cooldown, so we're going to go ahead and start with hitting Defend the Fallen. And you're going to hit 4 key again to cast Resuscitating Chant to make sure nobody energy starves. At that point, you're going to move in and you're going to hit Battle Fury, and then you're going to move to your 3 key, and you're going to spam your 3 key until you consume the two of the three emblems over here on the left. You'll see them. I'll show you here in just a second. After you get done with your Battle Fury, you're going to go and hit your uh, 1 key, Emblem of Pain, 2 key, Emblem of Vice, 3 key, Spam Macro. And you're going to repeat that rotation until you need to refresh uh, either your Wasting Insignia, Insignia Protection, Premonition, and all that. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. So we're going to start off on this boss. We're going to hit our R key for Premonition, Crota Defense, Insignia Protection. Now we have all of our stuff up. We're going to start with Wasting Insignia, Glacial Insignia, Insignia of Blood, Defend the Fallen, Resuscitating Chant, and we're going to hit Battle Fury, and now we're going to spam our 3 key uh, until we see these two guys right here disappear. So just a second here, you should see them disappear shortly. Okay, now we hit Wasting Insignia before you cast your emblems, because Wasting Insignia will consume your emblems. You can see we're pulling in the 50s now, so not too bad. Cast Insignia Protection to get it back up. Premonition's back up, so we're going to go ahead and use that. Cast our 3 a bunch of times. Refresh with Insignia. So you see, you want to try and use your Insignia of Protection when you don't have emblems up, um, so it doesn't consume them for you. Because you want to use, you want only want to consume them with your DPS ability. So you can see we're still up in the, the uh, 40s here. Um, we'll still steadily drop, but it looks like Insignia Protection is about to drop off again. So we're going to go ahead and finish those using Insignia Protection, and back into the one, two, three rotation. One, two, three, and then we got our our Premonition is up. Whoops, just hard cast. So premonition's up, so we're going to cast that one more time. Do Q, hit our five key, and keep on going. So you can see we're still doing it in the high 30s here, and we're not even we're not don't even have any of the actual raid cooldowns like the five percent and seven percent and all that. Uh, so we're still doing pretty good. We're probably going to get back into the 40s here, yeah, just for a second. Uh, but that's it, guys. It's relatively easy. You, you just have to maintain your corroded defense because that's what you're going to be asked to be cast most of the time, probably because yours lasts so long. And then you need to make sure that you're just doing one, two, three, one, two, three. That's the main bulk of it. And then using your Defend the Fallen and Resuscitating Chant at, at, uh, at good times for your raid leader. And using Battle Fury off cooldown um, because it is on a one minute cooldown. So you want to try and use it uh, when it comes off cooldown so that it's ready again when your Defend the Fallen is up uh, two minutes later. So, but that's it, guys. That's all for the rotation. If you have any questions at all, please leave them in the comments. Uh, if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I will see you guys next time.